whoa, what the heck was that? Ah, it was that amino acid, that one amino acid that might be the culprit when it comes down to just throwing a wrench in our longevity parade. Okay, I don't literally mean that like this one amino acid is the entire problem. But what we're starting to see now with the research is that when it comes to longevity, it's not just about caloric restriction. It's not just about protein restriction. We're getting more granular and the research is starting to take us in some different directions. So we're learning a lot and this one particular amino acid is one of the biggest culprits when it comes down to, well, attenuating the benefits of caloric restriction when it comes down to longevity. What do I mean by this? Well, let's dive into a study. There is a study published in the Journal of Nutrition and it took a look specifically at our friend methionine. Now, in this study, they gave mice a regular chow diet. This regular chow diet had 0.86% methionine. Now, they lived for a normal amount of time, whatever. Then they put the rats on a diet that was 0.17% methionine. So a pretty significant reduction in methionine. And guess what? They lived 30% longer with lower amounts of methionine. Whoa, 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 what's going on here? Well, here's where things get kind of interesting. They found that these rats ended up being a lot smaller. So that accounts for something. Smaller body mass ends up probably leading to more longevity too, but it was all rooted from the methionine. Well, it's kind of a problem because we don't necessarily want to be small and frail. But anyway, we dive in more. They also ate less. So then people that were opposing this study would say, well, they, they just lived longer because they ate less, because they were smaller and they ate less. Great point, super solid point. Such a solid point that the researchers actually adjusted for this and said, okay, we're gonna take the regular chow diet, 0.86% methionine, and we're gonna have the rats eat a much less amount of this so that they end up eating the same amount of calories that the small mice that had the 0.17% methionine ate. No change. They did not increase their lifespan. So even when the calories were reduced, they did not improve their lifespan. Whereas the group of rats that had the reduction in methionine did have a 30% increase in their lifespan. Does this mean that you need to 100% get methionine out of your diet? That it is a terrible, terrible, terrible thing? No, because what it is is methionine is still an essential amino acid. These essential amino acids trigger a specific growth response in the body. We need this growth response to repair, to rebuild, to build muscle, which is important. And I think what a lot of us want, right? So I'm not saying get rid of the methionine, but here's my theory on this, okay? There's a very important piece we have to look at. With methionine, we are getting a lot of methionine in muscle meat that we consume. We have been designed to eat everything. That would mean that nose to tail, right? We would ideally be eating kidneys, we'd be eating liver, we'd be eating organ meat and everything. The organ meat is much lower methionine content compared to the muscle meat. So we, as humans, we are eating a very skewed diet with a large amount of methionine compared to maybe what our ancestors would have consumed. So it's not necessarily about always restricting methionine. I do think we need to pay attention to restricting methionine, but even more importantly, we need to increase our ratio of other proteins to methionine because the methionine seems to have an issue. Now, I'm gonna dive into some more stuff that's very specific with methionine because it does start going down a really interesting pathway called S-adenosyl methionine, which we'll talk about in a second. What I am a fan of is cycling your proteins anyway. I don't think that you should just be eating ribeyes and chicken breasts every day, all day, right? It's not good. You should be rotating it up. You should be occasionally having the organ meat. You should be occasionally having this and that. And I'm not gonna rain on any diet parade. I am not gonna diet bash. That is not who I am. A lot of times if I'm using protein shakes, I use plant-based protein shakes. And I catch a lot of flack from the carnivore community. I even catch flack from the keto community. But I am big on that. I am big on getting the non-essential aminos and the essentials from different directions. And the nice thing with occasionally having plant-based protein is it is a lower methionine content. We're not gonna find liver shakes that are out there. Sorry, they just don't exist and they probably don't taste that good. But when it comes down to having a protein shake, having a plant-based shake might work well. I did put a link down below for the one that I use because I know people are gonna ask, they always do. It's Sun Warriors Active Line, which is a newer line from them that's utilizing pumpkin seed protein, which I find to be a very solid protein, alongside pea protein, which I've always been a fan of. 
but now having a larger ratio with pumpkin seed protein, which is super rich in zinc and super rich in other minerals, plus a very much easier to digest protein compared to a lot of these plant-based proteins. Also, they put enzymes and they put probiotics in there to help assist the digestion and the potential assimilation. So a very good product, but also it tastes amazing and it gives you the opportunity to occasionally cycle your proteins in with lower methionine content and kind of be aware of that, right? So that link is down below. You can save 20% off if you want to use that link. So 20% off whatever you want to order from Sun Warrior, whether it's the Warrior Blend or the Active Line Protein that I'm talking about here. So that link down below in the description. Mechanisms that have to do with aging. mTOR. Okay, mTOR is our growth signal. It is not a dimmer switch. It is either on or off. The moment we have one gram of protein, we flip that mTOR switch on all the way. It might only be for a minute, but it's on all the way. It doesn't go just a little bit. It goes all the way. mTOR is the opposite of autophagy. So on this channel, I talk a lot about fasting. I talk a lot about instilling and inducing that autophagy response in your body to recycle components of cells. If we are constantly spiking mTOR by constantly having these massive protein spikes, then we do inhibit autophagy. But we can accomplish this by still having autophagy by just reducing calories and fasting now and then, right? That way you can still get your protein in and eat it too. But you get to fast to kind of offset some of the switch, right? What you don't want to have happening is the constant mTOR switch being turned on by grazing on protein throughout the day. You want to have periods where you're giving your body a break and then boluses of protein. So now we get into this thing called S-adenosylmethionine. Now this also is just known commonly as SAM, S-A-M. Interestingly enough, in models that are typically mammals, but in animal models, you see as they get older, they accumulate S-adenosylmethionine, SAM, okay? They find that if they encourage the breakdown or the catabolism of SAM, it actually improves longevity. So SAM actually blocks autophagy. What? So methionine turns into SAM. So when you have excess methionine and consume a lot of methionine, eventually it converts into SAM. And SAM blocks autophagy and indirectly stimulates mTOR via something called s adenosylmethionine mammalian targeted rapamycin, SAMTOR. So I know I'm sounding like just a know-it-all that wants to use big words, and sometimes that's how I am. But just to make it short, SAMTOR triggers mTOR, which blocks the benefits of autophagy and can trigger some anti-longevity effects. So why do I keep raining on this methionine parade? Because I think if we look at one particular amino acid that we are skewed, like totally inaccurately with, I think we consume too much methionine in accordance to these other aminos, such as tryptophan, things like that. And you look at a lot of these different papers, you see that when they deprive people, or when they deprive uh, subjects, I should say, not typically done in people, of specific amino acids like tryptophan or whatever, it usually does improve longevity, but it comes with a side effect of stunted growth or dysfunction or some kind of tumor or things like that, right? So we need to be in balance. Humans, as we evolve and we eat more and more packaged food that's just super palatable, and even in the case of meat, we're eating meat that's just the perfect cut all the time, yeah, we do skew our ratio of what our body needs for optimum ability to thrive. So yes, do a Google search. Look at foods that are high in methionine and occasionally modulate them so you get a benefit there. But what do I know? I'm some dude on the internet with a dog that's around here somewhere. See you tomorrow.